Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici and I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. In this video we are covering CCNA semester 1 introduction to networks and this is chapter 4. This is section 4.2 network media. Upon completion of this section you should be able to identify the basic characteristics of copper cabling, describe fiber optic cabling and its main advantage over other media and then be able to describe wireless media. Characteristics of copper cabling. Network use copper media because it is inexpensive, easy to install and has low resistance to electrical current. So it's easy, cheap, uh, flexible and so on, it's great. Copper media is limited by distance and signal interference. Now the problem is for you, for example, if I, wanna, if I show you how to create a, a copper cable, ethernet cable, I can do that in a couple of hours and you'll become professional at it. It's great, that's why it's easy, it's cheap, that's why we use it. But the problem is with the copper media, it has limited distance, how much, how long the cable can be, as well as it does suffer from signal interference. Data is transmitted on copper cable as electrical pulses, and the longer the signal travels, the more it deteriorates in, in a phenomenon we refer to as signal attenuation. For this reason, all copper media must follow strict distance limitation as specified by the guiding standards. So for example, the, imagine this is the pure digital signal that we are sending it, yeah? And this is our interference, interference over the time. So this is the actual signal with interference. But you have to pay attention to this bit here. For example, as we send it, uh, this one here, as we send it zero, but they had quite a lot of interference at that point, that bit has changed into one. So obviously, there, when we do a frame check sequence, we find out that this bit actually, this frame has been corrupted. Nothing happened, it's just that he's got interference from, uh, from the uh, interference signal, and we have to discard this frame. Copper media. There are three main types of copper media used in the networking. So we have un unshielded twisted pair, Unshielded twisted pair have a have a four pairs, so eight cables in total. Yeah, color coded. Each pair is is uh, twisted with each other. No, uh, each cable is twisted in a pair. Yeah. Then we have a shielded twisted pair, which they have a shield to protect from EMI and RFI, and coaxial cable. Coaxial cable, pretty old cable, still gets used on our TV system. So at the back of that, for example, I don't know, Sky Dish, you will see this cable. RJ45 connector is widely used in a local area network with one type of media and in some wide area network with another type of media. Copper media safety, the separation of data and electrical power cabling must comply with the safety codes. Cable must be connected to correctly and identified correctly as well. Installation must be inspected for damage so and equipment must be grounded correctly. Properties of unshielded twisted pair cabling. UTP cable does not use shielding to counter the effect of EMI and RFI, electric, electric magnetic interference and radio frequency interference. Instead, cable designers have discovered that they can limit the negative effects of crosstalk by cancellation. When two wires in an electrical circuit are placed close together, the magnetic fields are the, are the exact opposite of each other. Therefore, the two magnetic fields cancel each other out and also cancel out any outside EMI and RFI signals. Unshielded twisted pair cable must follow precise specification governing how many twists or braids are permitted per meter, which is 3.28 feet of cable. Not very, uh, you're not going to be tested this, I don't think on the CCNA we're going to switch it. Unshielded twisted cable, uh, unshielded twisted pair cabling standards. So we have a uh, category 3 cabling, UTP, this is used for voice communication, most often used for the phone lines and so on. Then we have a very popular CAT5 or an even more popular CAT5E cabling used for data transmission. CAT5 supports 100 Mbps and can support up to 1000 Mbps, but it's not recommended. CAT5E does support 1000 Mbps. Then we have CAT6 cable on shielded twisted pair used for data transmission. An added separator is between each pair of wires allowing it to function at higher speeds. 
supports 1000 megabits per second up to 10 gigabits per second through 10 GPS gigabit per second is not recommended then we have a cast 7 and so on but as far as the CCNA a routine switching this is a cable standard that you have to be familiar with the connectors on shielded twisted pair connectors we have RJ45 on shielded twisted pair connected a plug this is a plug and then we have a socket so at the back of the socket you can uh, like crimp or punch punch tool them the cables are correctly coded very easy to do so and this plug fits the socket now if we are creating a cable this is a bad connector but too many wires are exposed uh, too many un like a lot of untwisting has been done here and uh, not everything is color uh, is covered uh, so for example you will have some kind of interference sorry if I go back there uh, yeah we will have interference on this part here this is actually what we want the good connector wires are untwist to the extent necessary to attach to the connector types of unshielded twisted pair so we have two types and well we have two standards so we have standard T568A let me just point in here while I'm talking here about this one that's our standard and T568B this is the standard this is this is a popular so you can use any standard it's fine but this is a popular so it's known to be using so T568B if you put both sides with this standard for example both sides with this standard so then there will be a straight through cable if both ends of the cable is T568B then it's straight through cable it can be A or B but B is more common out there if you if one side of the cable is B and the other side of the cable is A then that will be a crossover cable crossover cable if one standard is B one standard is A it's a crossover the straight through cable we will connect to um, devices network host to network devices such as switch or hub they are dissimilar to the what they do so for example you connect PC to your switch that will be a straight through cable or both ends to T568B if you connect two similar devices like two switches or two hubs or two uh, PCs back to back then you're gonna have to con uh, connect it with a crossover cable rollover cable not the type of cable this is Cisco proprietary and remember the word proprietary only Cisco, only the vendors they have they can use it connects the workstation to serial port to a router console port using an adapter so type of unshielded twisted pair so if I connect two PC uh, sorry two switches together I'm gonna use crossover cable you can see it there that's a crossover if I connect a uh, switch to router they are not similar devices so this is gonna be a straight through cable if I connect a switch to a PC dissimilar devices so that's gonna be a straight through cable if I connect a router to a PC what do you think same or not they are actually the same device because the PC the router is just a PC, advanced PC, yeah? So it's gonna be a crossover cable. If I connect the PC uh, through the console, if this was a blue, it, it's a rollover, yeah? So we connect it to the console port. Properties of fiber optic cabling. Fiber optic cabling is now being used in four types of industry. Enterprise network, fiber to the home, FTTH and access network, long haul network and submarine networks pretty much you, you will have uh, in the sea in the oceans lots of fiber optic cables running around also an optical fiber is very thin it composes of two kind of glass and a protective outer, outer shield which we have a core glass which consists of pure glass and is a part of the fiber where light is actually carried because remember the light pulses we send with the fiber yeah so the core is a pure glass that we actually send those lights in then we have another type of glass it's called cladding and this type of glass acts as a mirror so in case our, our signal is our light source or light pulses they try to escape the cladding will send them back or will reflect them back into the core then we have a jacket typically a PVC jacket that protects the core and cladding just if I want to if I go back here like light source can travel light pulses can travel in one direction only so you can send right you can't just send and receive with the light so either send or receive so for that reason if with a fiber optic cable you're always going to see two 
cables one for sending one for receiving um, there's another type the new type so you can send and receive at the same time but that's for the future lessons type of fiber media we have a single mode fiber SMF consists of very small coal and use ex uses expensive laser technology to send a signal array of lights popular in long distances situations spanning hundreds of kilometers so we have a small coal 9 microns which you don't really need to know this, these numbers and 125 microns in diameter for the glass cutting but if we are we send in only a single single mode only a single straight path for light then we have a multi mode which consists of a larger core and uses LED light emitting diode emitted to send light pulses light from LED enters the multi mode fiber at a different angles this is popular in in lands and it does provide uh, up to 10 gigabit per second and the length of 550 meters so here we can have allows multiple paths of the lights network fiber connectors so we have a uh, some type of connectors a different type of connector ST connector here SC connector LC connector this is a very popular and then we have we can check for example if we want to connect now I told you earlier that if I if I show you how to create a copper cable or Ethernet cable a couple of hours you'll be good at it now not professional you just be good at it now uh, fiber of the cable no fiber of the cable is not going to be a couple of hours it's going to be months to actually show you and we have this optical time domain reflectometer which actually going to check if if the actually cable is correct if you have to join two cables together the light has to be like pretty much 100% otherwise it's already not going to travel and the fiber of the cables are very thin yeah so it's going to be problem problematic to work with fiber optic versus copper cable so bandwidth supported uh, unshielded twisted pair they have uh, for example 10 mbps up to 10 gigabit per second and then fiber it has 100 gigabit per second distance relatively short 1 to 100 meters relatively high up to 100,000 meters immune to EMI and RFI very low on copper cables very high if not completely immune for fiber optic cables immunity to electrical hazard low on UTP and high completely immune to electrical hazard media and connector cost very low on cabling uh, UTP cabling very high on the fiber optic cable installation skills required low lowest eh, I would say lowest you still need to know how to do it and very high I told you months to fiber of the cable safety precaution very low on your shield to repair you can be as cowboy as you want still would be okay and fiber optic cable no you have to be very careful they say that okay if you if one side of the fiber of the cable is connected and you look at the other side directly with your eye it will blind you <laughs> okay all these signs if you see all these signs you know that there's wireless yeah we can connect to our wireless wireless does not does have some areas of concern which includes coverage area how far we can go okay you know if I put a wireless in my living room is it gonna reach everywhere around my house yeah that's why that's my concern All right, life is good interference interference is because the wireless they use a spectrum that is unlicensed we can have interference from another wireless device a neighbor wireless or some other devices like uh, some other devices like uh, say microwave big problem you know if you put the wireless device next to the microwave if I say because I don't want to actually put the wireless device inside the microwave and see turn the microwave on and see what happens no no put it next to the microwave and put the microwave on and see what happens <laughs> it's gonna destroy the wireless it's not gonna uh, the, you're not gonna reach anything and then obviously biggest problem is security we have to be very careful to our uh, security configuration on the wireless devices because the wireless you know imagine the wireless way if you if you put the uh, wireless device in your organization it's pretty much like putting rj 45 sockets everywhere around the street and and saying uh, nobody will connect yeah. types of different wireless media we have is first of all is wi-fi now this wi-fi has different standards not really necessary to concentrate or pay too much attention on CCNA 1 more is going to be on CCNA 4 talking about this 
then the one that you need to know now is 8311 yeah that's our standard then we have a bluetooth bluetooth if you have a mobile phone probably probably smartphone has a bluetooth and that's going to be that your short distances very short distances and the standard there is 82.15 yeah that's our standard with bluetooth now support speeds up to three megabits per second and provide device pairing over distances from one to 100 meters okay there's three different versions but the versions that we use they're never going to get 100 meters i can promise you that then we have a WiMAX. it's not the type of wireless uh, broadband kind of 82.16 that's a standard for it it provides the speeds up to one gigabit per second and uses a point to multipoint topology to provide a wireless broadband access this is a typical wireless router well cisco router that has a well you're doing it's integrated router yeah so it's doing three jobs it's doing routing it's doing the switching it's got some switch ports at the back and it's got the wireless pretty much most likely yeah it's going to be doing the firewall as well thank you very much for watching and uh, hopefully to see you in the next video 4.3 data link for layer protocols bye bye